Have you ever wondered if you could make your planning hobby a little bit more sustainable? Yeah, me too. Hi, I'm Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and I am back with another video about creative planning, bullet journaling, and some artsy things like calligraphy and alcohol. It was recently Earth Day, and this question comes up in my mind a couple times a year where I'm just thinking about, wow, this hobby uh, is really paper and material intensive. And sometimes I think about what are the ways that I can reduce my personal impact, and maybe you wonder that too. Now, I gonna give you a couple tips, but knowing that ultimately the major responsibility is on bigger companies and the ways they choose to source their materials and their labor and how they distribute. And so this is just a way for us to do our part individually, knowing that the system needs some overhauling. So here are a couple ways that we can make our planning and stationary hobby a little bit more sustainable. First, whenever you can, try to shop smaller and more locally. A lot of times we forget about the emissions and the things that get released when you have to do shipping, and so finding ways to support smaller companies allows a little bit slower shipping so that the emissions are a little bit lower, and we're supporting a, a local company. And sometimes the prices are a little higher because they are sourcing maybe more um, ethically sourced materials or they're paying fairer labor prices and they don't have the ability to produce in bulk and so this is a way that we can choose where our dollars go and support more local makers and potentially some more sustainable options. Next is to buy second hand. A lot of times if you're just looking for a specific thing, you want to just try it out or you want to buy one um, to, to see if it works in your planning style, it works best to just give it a, a shot by buying something second hand from somebody. I've done this a countless number of times to see if things like the Hobonichi were for me, a couple of pens were for me. Giving something a second life is always a little bit more preferred than buying something brand new in the cycle. So some of my favorite places are from friends online or from Facebook. Facebook groups and then on the flip side tip number three is to be able to destash your things and if you find out that things are no longer sparking joy for you or providing you any usefulness it's really helpful to give those things to somebody else to give again an extended amount of life and that way it keeps things in more of a circular economy versus buying things brand new and adding to the demand of more materials more resources from the earth and again some of my favorite places are from facebook groups doing it on instagram and in my stories or doing it in local planner groups even where sometimes you have a de-stash pile and you can just basically give away stuff that you don't find useful anymore while giving something else a second life. Something that I haven't tried but may work really well is Mercari. I know some people sell their planner stuff there and have been really successful at it. Destashing does take a lot of work, especially if you're trying to resell it because you have to set up all the payments and you have to sometimes go through a lot of shipping hassles. So if you don't want to go through that and you're really okay with it going to somebody else who could use it, then give, donating it to organizations, schools, friends, whatever, um, is also a really helpful way to share the love of that product. You can also be pretty intentional with buying materials that can be reusable or refillable. So this is why a lot of people really like fountain pens because you can refill the ink and then just keep the barrel. You don't have to keep buying the whole plastic mechanism over and over again. It's also why people really like going digital. Um, not only is it you know, you can carry it with you all the time, but it's also, again, not something that you have to carry pen and paper for. And it doesn't work for everybody, but having that digital option with a lot of notebooks coming out, I have a couple things coming to me that I'll be doing reviews on to see if that works for you. And then um, things like Rocketbook, where you can have uh, one notebook that you can write in, it creates like a p digital page and then you just start over again. So that reusable piece, um, as well as like refillable pen ink. So things like the, the Pilot G2, one of the most common examples is that you just keep that plastic barrel and then you just buy the refills on the inside. And that way you reduce the amount of plastic that you're using, but you can still keep using your favorite pen. 
see where you can recycle some of these things. One of my favorite little shops in the area in Minnesota is a craft store, art supply store called Wet Paint Art. And one of the things that they have invested in is partnering with a company called TerraCycle and collecting a lot of pens and markers so that they can send in a huge barrel of them to recycle properly. And so if you have something that's near you, you can search on the TerraCycle website and they'll be able to tell you if there's any collectures in the area that you can combine with and send those things off to be properly recycled. Does anybody else have a local shop that does something like that? Uh, I think the thing that I'm struggling to recycle is, is more of like the thicker like notebooks, like it just feels weird to just recycle the whole thing, right? So if there's anything like that, or, or it just feels weird to throw away sticker sheets, but if you have other recycling tips, I would love to hear them down below. Um, and then lastly, honestly, the one thing that we can do to make our hobby a little bit more sustainable is simply not buying the things that we don't need. Um, they talk about the three R's when we were in school, right? The reduce, reuse, recycle. And then there's just like the, la the last one, which is refuse and, and not taking the things that maybe are free or buying things that we are trying out but don't actually need. And that is where we have to start using our own stash. You saw my video last week. It was about the 365 freeze where I am trying to use up my own stuff and not buy a bunch of planner stuff for the next year. That is probably one of the most meaningful ways that we can be more earth conscious is to refuse buying more things. In the meantime, I've created a spread in my bullet journal to help motivate me to use more and more of my own stash. I'll show you what that looks like. So in my bullet journal, I've created this spread to try to motivate me to use up my stash. And so part of it is my creative stuff over here and part of this is my personal stuff because I am moving and trying to use up the things that I have. And so on this side, you could just decide what are the things that you have a lot of and just start putting them down here. And I just use some colorful markers from Arteza, my trusty Twi markers, and added some blocks so that I can check them off as I go. It is quite satisfying, I will tell you that, where every time you use up a sticker sheet, you check it off. Every time I've used up a pen, again, what satisfying feeling, you check it off. And I've got some markers, my alcohol inks, and canvases. And sometimes it is helpful to have this ready to go so that I remind myself that I already have a lot of these things and I shouldn't be buying anymore. On this side, this is just my household stuff. So some of this stuff is because I know that I can use it up before the move and then other stuff it's because I have a shit ton of it and need to use it up. So for example, I know that there's like just my toner. I'm almost to the end of it, really close to using it up. So I want to you know, motivate myself to check this box off. So it's one less thing to move to the new place. And some of this stuff is also like food that's in my freezer. I need to like work my way into that. And then at the bottom, I started adding, adding some things because um, somebody, Caitlin reminded me, don't you have a lot of lipstick? And yes, girl, I do. So I added lipstick at the bottom and just added little circles for the number of those things mostly because I forgot to mark multiple at the beginning, so I just started marking multiples after I listed it. Um, so I'm just putting in a casual five, candles, a couple of those, mostly because I will be done with this notebook before I can use up five lipsticks. So this is like quite a stretch. Um, for you, you can decide whatever you want um, in order to motivate yourself to use up something, whether it's maybe notebooks or sticky notes, but being able to celebrate the using of your own things before you buy other stuff is motivating. Okay, those were my tips for how to make our planning and stationary hobbies just a little bit more sustainable. What tips do you have that maybe I should consider doing? Um, what are the things that are on your use it up list? Maybe I should add those to mine. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, keep an eye out for some of my upcoming videos. I'll be talking more about how this is going, as well as some questions that you're going to need to ask yourself when planner launch season really kicks off. So let me know in the comments. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye.